Hi guys, <clears throat> I am back with my um, Tsunami Rose Designs design team project for um, February stroke March and I confess I actually haven't gotten any further with it just yet um, but yeah but today I am going to work on these two pieces that I was unsure what to do with so I am going to grab those I am going to grab those I am going to where did I put them there are extra pages I, yeah there are the extra pages I don't need those maybe them okay but yeah so let's bring this out as well put that to one side and possibly doors okay i'll pop that over there and let's get to work oh, excuse my chair for squeaking it's doing me in. i can't do anything about it um i've oiled it and done all sorts it still squeaks really annoying okay so <clears throat> my plan before i do this i will just recap I am doing a ring bound journal for the first time. I've never done a ring bound journal this way before. I've actually never done a ring bound journal at all of any variety, let alone one from scratch. Um, and I am using Daisy's New Beginnings kit. Um, and yeah, so what I did with this was I printed um, two sheets to one page to shrink them down. And then I cut them out and sandwiched a piece of book page between them glued them together and then sewed around them so this is actually a full page but it shrunk down because i printed two page two to one two pages to one um so instead of getting one full a4 or eight and a half by 11 i got two smaller ones on one sheet of paper which is perfect so i've done that and then i've just added a piece of tea dyed paper in between and I was supposed to be gluing those together um, that was just so that I could add a bit of strength for the rings to go through but anyway but yeah so we have this one here I like that because you can just very faintly see the book page through um, nowhere near straight stitching but you know so I have used the main pages from the kit and then just popped a plain a piece of tea dyed paper in between each one for extra journaling space this is predominantly going to be a writing journal so the kind of like the main part of this is the pages like the kit pages are more the focal point really um i don't know whether i'm going to be adding pockets and tucks and stuff um but yeah so I mean, I probably will on some of the main pages, like on the backs or something like that, maybe. But I don't know yet. It depends how bulky it's going to get. So, but yeah, so these are the beautiful pages. I love them. Absolutely love them. I haven't inked around them either because originally I was going to and then I decided actually I'm probably not because I can't find, excuse me, I can't find an ink to use that I like. Originally, I was going to use Hickory Smoke because it gives it that really nice dark outline, but not in your face, black. But then I decided I didn't like it, so <laughs> hmm, I'm a bit torn. So like here on the front page, I used Black Soot, and I will do that for the back page as well. So it, you know, I don't mind highlighting the front and back page. And then I decided, just on the top of there, I was just having a look I decided to have a go around with the hickory smoke because it highlights it but it's not in your face black like that but then I decided actually I don't like it I prefer it uninked so it's staying I mean apart from that bit there it will stay uninked so that is the main part of the journal and then we have these two pages here that still need to go in the journal um that I was unsure what to do with and well I know what I want to do with them but 
I didn't quite know how to go about it. What I want to do with them is cut just inside these borders here and this oval here so that it's open. Um, and that was going to go on the other side like that. So that would be open there and then that would be... So it's going to be like this but there will be this bit here will be open for you to slide something in and out um, but that meant you know you're going to see the book page through it no you're not sorry <laughs> I need to put something on the back of there so you see that through it I'll get there in a minute um, but yeah so I was thinking actually of either putting maybe that behind it so you've got that nice pink tones to look at or just some of this nice pink paper behind so what we will do is cut them out and see I think that's going to be the best bet um, just go for it so let's start cutting then so let's just make them make a start I know I'm going to lose some of the butterfly and flowers and what have you but I can live with that so to that corner Let's go to that corner. That corner there, and then there. And let's just see. I hope this works. If not, I'll either reprint them and add them at a later date or I'll just not bother. Um, it's a little bit flimsy down that end now, but it's going to be glued onto the other bit so it doesn't matter. That will add stability. Okay, so eyeball that in a straight line. Like I said, I'm just cutting to the inside of this frame. There we go, like that. Cool. And that will then go onto here. That way. So that will then stick on there so that when you turn it over, that's on the back. But we need something there, like I said, otherwise it's just going to be see through, like clear. I was wondering maybe something like that. I'm not keen on that now. Or let's just have pink. Ah, I think the pink's going to be fine. Maybe tone it down a little bit with some, um, not stamping, inking. Hmm. Right, now I think this is probably going to end up being a top loader because that's going to be too flimsy to come in from the side. So, yeah, more stability there at the top and we can add a bit of extra um, cardstock or something to the top of that just to give it a bit more strength. Maybe some extra down the sides as well. Yeah, 
like that idea. Okay, so let's just put that to one side. I'm not going to do this oval one on camera, I'll do that off camera. We'll just do this one first because this is going to take a bit. We'll do this one first and see how we get on. Okay, so whilst we're reinforcing this and figuring out what to do with this, we shall. Does that go that way or that way? I think it goes that way. Alright, so we shall glue that on there then. It's going to get cut around anyway, so it doesn't matter if it overhangs. Okay. Sorry for all the shaking, camera shaking, guys. Now the tripod is attached to the desk. It's really annoying because obviously when I do things like this, the desk bounces and then, of course, so does the tripod. But, like I said, I can't actually do anything about that now that the tripod is stuck to the desk. Well, attached to the desk, should I say. Let's just burnish that down. like so and then that will when it's lined up will glue onto there like that leaving that top bit open um, right we need some form of acetate or something to put on there don't we I forgot we can't leave it open um, first of all it needs to be inked so um, I think I will use the hickory smoke for this just that inside edge there needs inking so I think it's that one I'm using archival ink here I'm not sure where my acetate is. I'll have to go rooting for it. Oh, actually, yes, I know exactly where it is. It's in the drawer downstairs. Okay, in the studio. Yep. Okay, so I will ink this and then I'll pop you on pause and I'll be back in a moment. Or so I go and get some. I've just remembered exactly where it is, so that's very useful. Perfect. Okay. So, like I said, I will just pop you on pause for a moment now and I will go out and get the acetate. Okay, guys, I found some. Um, interestingly, I found some patterned one as well. Yeah, so... Ooh, good job and all because that doesn't actually fit. I do have more. Uh, it does fit, but only just. Um, okay, I do have more, plain, but I found this patterned one, which I think might be interesting. I think that'd be very interesting. I like that. So I think we're going to use this. All right, so let's measure. We need. I'm going to say four, four and a half, yeah, four and a half by three and a half, so 
so let's get the trimmer out. And let's just double check because I need to get this directional because of the pattern. So I need three and a half tall by four and a half wide. So that is tall wise, so that needs to be three and a half. Height, I mean not tall, same thing. Three and a half tall height. by four and a half wide like so let's see if that's right yep and how much of that covers ooh actually no I'm wrong How am I wrong? What have I done? Ugh. Four and a half. Honestly. Got this one. That one will do me because I'm using the wrong bit. Um. Yeah. Right. That. Is okay, but I actually could do with it being a little bit wider. Just give me extra to glue. So I'm gonna go. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Four and three quarters. I don't do measuring, guys. Yeah, three. Well, let's go three and three quarters. Actually, let's go four. Doesn't matter how tall it is, does it? Oh, for loads of space. Let's go five, even. That's cool, loving that. Okay, so this is four and three quarters. Told you I don't measure. I measured wrong. <laughs> right, that needs a tiny bit more off. Four and five eight. I'm just going to keep trimming a tiny bit off at a time until I get the right size. A little bit more. Oh yeah, okay. Let's go four and a half. Which is actually what I said originally. But I must have gone three. No, okay. Good job I've got more of this stuff in it. And it's a good job we're all doing one on video. Got some nice little off cuts though. Okay, so now I can kind of decide because it's textured on one side and not on the other. But that is cool. I like that. Yes, I like that. Okay, so. I think I will use um, three in one for this as well. I don't think I'll mess about with Fabri-Tac or, or Fabri-Tac art glitter glue. Um, just getting the glue down to the bottom now. Come on.
there we go. Alright, so... here itself. And on we go. Got a little bit of wriggle room with this, which is good. There we go. Across we go. Oh my gosh, I love that. That looks so cool. Let's burnish it properly. cool right now you can actually come in from the side now that's reinforced that bit um, yeah oh, that is just cool let's just go under there a tiny little bit Did any even come out then? <laughs> I'm not sure if any actually come out then. It is doing now. So let's go down there and under there. Yep, that's good. Here, this is where the book page is, is coming away now from the design page, kit page, I mean. So, just go round it again to reinforce. I'm not sure actually thinking now if my sewing machine will go through acetate. I've never tried. That's gonna be interesting. Hmm. Okay, so this now me gluing on to there. But I think this needs cutting out first now. Oh, I do love that window. Right, so now, decisions, decisions. Now, do we do it a top loading pocket or do we do it a side loading pocket? That is strong enough now to do as a side tuck. Um, but do I want fluffy bits coming out of the top? I think the 
will go for the top. So I want to go around this side then. Come on. across the top okay and let's see if I can line this up say please tell me I haven't put it on upside down but that page on the back actually doesn't really matter <laughs> the other one I need to pay attention to because it directional background uh, yeah it's actually got my name on that one <laughs> so I'll have to pay attention to that one okay that a real good burnish glue everywhere but never mind good job it dries clear get off and it's acetate so it'll wipe clean that's cool okay so there's nothing there anyway because it's open Not going to do anything with that now I'm going to put it to one side to dry but now we have a pocket um, so my original thoughts were to put something like this in there which is super cool because now I can actually do that cool Or I could just make a large tag. Or you could actually use the guest check. No, we could. Yep, yeah, we could alter a guest check, put a little tab on it, and have that that's coming out of the top. That's cool. So I'm just going to quickly cut around this and then I will clip it to help it dry. So I mean I think it actually is already dry. fabric tax is quite good and dries very fast but because of the bulk it might just need a bit of help on this side so I will just neaten that up add a bit more glue if necessary a bit along this top edge cool 
Okay. And there we go. I should have reinforced the opposite side of this for the bottom, but never mind. And the rings, oh yeah, the rings are going to go through part of that. Never mind. It doesn't matter because there's still a big gap there to put something in. Yeah, no problem. It's not going to, yeah. Like if the ring goes through there, it's not going to get in the way of putting something in there. So that is great. Um, yeah, I love it. I do love that in there. I love these mason jars that Daisy does. Okay, so that is my <laughs> kind of, I'm going to say botchy attempt at windows, but it's not too bad. I think it does need inking actually. After that, this one maybe i may just possibly kind of do every other one maybe or maybe just do it very lightly instead of inking full on because it does help get rid of those white bits where i haven't cut straight and it does just help to frame it out a little bit so yeah i think i probably will do the Hickory smoke just around the edge like this. Also, I can think it needed to hit this one anyway because I've done the inside of the window with it. So yeah, I think it needed it. And it does hide my rubbish cutting skills. <laughs> We will we'll just very lightly edge them instead of inking full on. I like that. Right. I think, guys, I will love you and leave you for this video. A little semi short and sweet one. Um, <laughs> and I shall attempt. Oh, I'll leave that sideways because I'm going to keep using it. I shall attempt to now do the other one off camera and see if I can not botch it up. Um, I'm just looking for my circle punch to see if perhaps maybe no, I don't think I can get it in. I can't get it. No, I can't get it in. Oh yeah, I can. I can get it in that way. Maybe a thumb all. That's too small for a thumb all. Mm. Maybe I'll draw around something and just put a little notch in there. Um, what have we got? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You'll see that in the next video anyway, and then I will just pop that somewhere in between these pages. But yeah, that's what I was thinking with this. And then, like I said, I need to do the oval-shaped one next, which will be this one. And I will do it in a very similar way, probably the same way. Um, I don't think any of this acetate will do now. Nope, because it's not wide enough. But I do have another sheet of this. Um, so, with the flowers on. So, yeah, I think... Yeah, no, they won't do. Um, but like I said, I do have some more with some exact same of that with the flowers on. So I think I will do that and, again, use this pink paper in the background. That's going to cut it fine a bit. Could do it that way. Well, you'd see the crease i do have some more of this pink paper as well so yeah um i shall do that and i shall get on with all that in the background and then um yeah hopefully the next video that i do with you guys will be um putting the rings on uh, not putting the other pages together the extra pages that i've got to go in between and then 
putting the rings on and we shall be done with this one. Um, yes, I do have other parts of the kit to work with, but this ring bound journal was the main focus for me for February stroke March's design team project. The other parts of the kits that I chose to work with, I will do that as a um, add on sort of thing. So that will be probably April, May's design team project. Still using the same kit, just on a smaller ver smaller basis. Um, yeah, but I really love how that turned out. Really do love how that turned out. Um, but yeah, so there you go, guys. I'll take a picture for the thumbnail. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.